Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Life First Podcast. I am Andrew. And I'm Tiffany. She's over there. He's over there. Wow. Wow. Uh, hey, Tiffany. Hi. How are you doing? I'm okay. My throat's a little <laughs> sore today, so I apologize if I sound, like, deeper or scratchier than normal, but we'll get through it. I'm here for the selectors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, How are you doing? Do pretty good. Last week was the uh, you guys have seen the Niji Sanji stuff coming out. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But yep. uh, last week was the EU ceremony, the one that's on mm-hmm. Card Garden again. It was cool seeing some of you guys show up there too and say that you guys saw the podcast and you were here for that. Yeah, that's always fun. We love talking to you. Yeah, definitely way fun to to have you guys playing. Uh, and we did pretty well for that one. I think so. Yeah, I can't remember what place I got. I think it was seventh. seventh. That's right. It was 7th out of 16, 18, 18, 18. something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you get? Got first, I think. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the humility <laughs> of it all. I, uh, yeah, I got first place. Um, going up against Pigeon in the finals, which was fun because I always like playing Pigeon. Yeah, he's a great player. Absolutely. He was playing Madoka. Um, I was playing Tomaclear, and you were playing Tomaclear. Yeah. Um, we went in with twin decks. <laughs> it was just like I just I just wanted to play something that I knew would work under thirty five minute rounds because that's what they were. Yeah. Uh, and that's a little bit tight on time. Yeah, y'all know my opinion on that. So, yeah, that worked out well. And he was playing Vision, ended up playing Madoka Clear. Or sorry, not Madoka Clear. So excuse Madoka me, Esper. Madoka Esper. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't think Tama is necessarily favored against, but I did I did win. Uh, it was a really nail biter first game, and then the second game was not a nail biter. I just I got lucky. I got in a lot of early damage with no bursts to mm-hmm. stop me, and then I ran away with the game. I um, ran away. So so I was like I saw I saw the the opportunity uh, on turn two. He used Super Holestia Saber, which meant he had a Garden Hand for me to clear away at that point. Which is like for me, it was like oh this is, this is just. This is the sign I'm supposed to. Yeah, go you ham. cleared really early. Yeah, I'm just supposed to go ham here, and I and I and I did, and mm-hmm. I was managed to to pull it off. We we got to the end, and when he milled out his last like four cards, three of them were servants. And I was like, yeah, 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 that was the sign. Yeah, that's tough. That's uh, tough. I mean, it was funny because like, you know it's not you guys can actually watch all the games on the Card Garden channel. Yeah, that's what I was gonna um, say because it was live streamed. Uh, but you don't. It's not like picking up any of our audio, which is. Particularly funny because because uh, Pigeon and I were being being very joke jokester to each other because mm-hmm. we're familiar with each other. You know, at the end he said, you know, like, all right, whatever, you know, good game, good game. And I was like, you don't have to lie to me. That second game was not great. <laughs> it was just real bad luck on your end. And he was like, I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> it's like no rudeness needed, man. I it was not a great game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes those games are super tough. Yeah, those games went super fast because of the time limit it was 30 minute rounds with five minutes of overtime for a total of 35 yeah, yeah, yeah. and y'all know me i think that it should be a minimum of 40 minutes mm-hmm. but that is what it was i yeah i'm not a huge fan of 35 minutes round. i think i think you need a 40 minute round minimum for this game mm-hmm. but you know i one of the things that i i i often say and i defend it a little bit here is that like in preparation for the GP, one of the things that I do is we have these round timers on our um on our on our channel. You guys can use them too. When we play games, we often turn those on, and they we just say like, all right, you've got to win the game by this time because you should be so confident at your deck that like your chess clock for how long it takes you to go through it should be less than than your or hopefully less than your opponent. So that way. If your opponent stumbles or is like kind of having a hard time with something or figuring out a distinctive board state, you have that wiggle room mm-hmm. to maneuver. I think 35 is probably the minimum that I could probably win a match in. But there were some games that were just tight, you know? Yeah, they were tight. Um, it was still good. Yeah. Uh, Card Garden puts on good, good uh, parties and ceremonies. So if you're interested in playing online, maybe your locals aren't super close to you, Card Garden is a good place to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, this is not sponsored by Card Garden. No. We just play there. <laughs> no, no, we just, I just like the store, so it's yeah. free, free promos free for promo. them. Yeah. Um, what are we talking about today? We are talking about, we're doing our usual thing where we do a review of, of the Niji Sanji set, where we're, uh, I guess Niji Sanji's not the re- the normal thing, but, or, 
Our reviews are the normal thing that we do. Yeah, we're getting we're getting a new set, which means that we're going to talk about some of the best cards, in our opinion. Yeah. Uh, so make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any future reviews, and leave a comment down below on what you think are some of the best cards if we didn't cover them. Yeah, and, and to be clear here, right, so the way that the Niji Sanji set works is they're updating uh, a, a type, right? They're, they're updating the virtual subtype to become relevant for modern day we cross with this power creep the yes because the original vtubers or not vtubers sorry the virtual signy type class mm -hmm. debuted in set zero and has not been updated since then. no and and to be completely frank we're pretty much completely... i thought you were andrew sorry it's a bit <laughs> you can call me frank for the rest of this one uh it'll be a real comment joke. down below hello frank <laughs> um so so be completely uh andrew uh, the, <laughs> the the virtuals were pretty powered out by set two. Like it was a zero zero set had a couple of cards in it that are weirdly good, like Neon Tetra, and just remained pretty good for the rest of it, right? Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of cards that just they just weren't good from the start. Yeah, and and a lot of the virtuals ended up being in that boat too. They 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 had some form of synergy which made them a, a somewhat compelling deck to do, but then. The rest of, like, basically they were just almost all universally bad. Um, so they got, they got, they got power creeped out. So this brings them uh, up to power and maybe a little bit above power. So I think before we dive real deep into it, you're going to see there's going to be missing inclusions in this, in, in this list. And that's because I think you could probably take uh, all of these virtuals and shuffle them basically into a deck at random and you'll have a competent deck to play. So they're all pretty average to above average. But that being said, our review is to call out some specific ones that are like, here's notable ones. I think these are potentially better, you know, than than your alternative options here. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're just talking about the standouts here that, that we think that we think are particularly noteworthy. Yeah. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Uh our first one that we're gonna talk about here is uh, Saline Girls Academy. After, so cute. After school and uh, Obia, Obas, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. that, that Obs, it looks like Obsidia. Obsidia Salvage. Okay, so this is part of this new uh, dealio with, with the, um, with pieces, mm -hmm. which is that there's gonna be this new thing called relay pieces. Uh, and that basically, in order to play a more powerful second piece, you need to use these generically okay pieces on the front end. You're basically committing to a chain of pieces. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you commit to a chain of, I don't know, uh, assist line or something. That's true, yeah. I mean, I guess you could kind of look at it like that. Like in the same way that you would grow like a level zero to a level one, mm -hmm. um, but you could choose which level one and you can choose which level two. Um, you're doing the same thing. You're just chaining your pieces together. Right. Um, and these are all these are all good. Like you're, we're gonna go to the next slide after this and spoilers. It's gonna have the relay pieces on here. <laughs> they all have their choice. There's all reasons you'd use one versus the other. Mm -hmm. um, and they're both they're both good. Is what I'm trying to get. You 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 are. They are all virtual, just to be clear, you're not putting this in a deck that's a non-virtual deck. But if you are doing the subclass virtual, this is this heavily supports the archetype. And and like we haven't really seen this in We Cross yet. A, a subtype be this universally supported. I mean, it is got like if you look at the old uh if you look at the old centers, mm -hmm. they have support for virtuals, mm -hmm. right? Toko, for example, can, you can sacrifice a virtual to do negative 3,000. Mm -hmm. um, they have assist lines that deal with virtuals. Liz, Ange, and Toko all deal with the virtual stuff. And then now we have a uh, pieces lines that deal with virtuals. That means that unlike every other tribe in We Cross right now, virtuals exist in You can make your entire 12 card uh, Elrig decks support virtuals. You can't do that with anything. There's no centers that support any other any other uh any other type class. Type class, right? There's nothing that supports angels, for example. I thought that there was. There's a I know, piece. There's, there's signies and pieces that do, but you're right, I don't think they exist in the little rig deck. Right. So this is this is for what's worth, this tribe is the most supported tribe in We Cross as of this. Which is cool. I mean, uh, I think virtuals are cool. 
Um, so let's talk about these two cards in particular. Uh, Tiff, you want to read the first one? All right. So for Selene Girls Academy After School, uh, it's a cost zero relay for Ninji Sanji uh, with main phase timing. As you use this piece, you may pay exceed four as an additional cost. Put, put four cards from underneath your Lurig into the Lurig trash. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Reveal up to two virtual Signy from among them and add them to your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. If you exceeded four, enter charge one. Cool. All right, the next one. Uh, so o Obia Salvage is a... Obsidia Salvage. Obsidia Salvage is a... Uh, main phase assist, or so, sorry, main phase piece that also has exceed four as a cost that you can do if you want. Uh, you put the top two cards of your deck into the trash, and then you add up to two virtual cards from your trash to your hand. And then if you beat it, paid exceed four, uh, then you can add target virtual from your trash to your hand. Uh, it's worth mentioning one of these pieces is white, the other one is black. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because... Celine Girls Academy After School is a white piece, and Obsidia Salvage is a black piece. Yeah, and, and that kind of matters. It, right now, There's the color restrictions haven't been let go. so It matters uh, for, for the English North American... Right. Uh, what is this called? Sorry. I like brain fart. Diva, diva format. Yeah, for the, for the <laughs> format. Sorry. I was like, set? No, that's a different word. Anyways, but it, it matters for us right now. It doesn't... Though the rules have changed for Japan, they have not changed for us. Right. So So if you're going to use one of these virtuals, because there are worlds where you go mono-white virtuals or mono-black virtuals, and not just mm -hmm. black-white virtuals, yeah. um, because you might want a different assist line, for example, then this is something to consider. you got you got to play you know, the correct L-Rig to, to, to play these cards. Um, that being said, they basically are the same. You get a little bit more dig and a little bit more... Um, a little bit more selection power and a little bit more um, card advantage from salvage mm -hmm. than you do from after school. After school gives you is is a little easier on your enter because you can enter charge and you also uh, aside from enter charging it also costs zero. I don't know that you can exceed four both times though. No, 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 no. You're only using one of the pieces. You can only exceed up to seven. Right. In you're, a game. you're only using one of the pieces. Because you're exceed. using right, you're using one of these pieces and then the relay piece, which is going to be on the next slide. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you, you pick one. You've got you just basically pick what you want. Do you want to be more careful about your enter, or do you want more raw card advantage? So, for example, it I makes think makes sense for the colors. Yeah, I think the black, for example, probably wants the black piece. Wants the card advantage. Uh, right? because because they have less ways to really fill up their hand than white does. Mm -hmm. So, as such, I think it's more valuable. For them, for example. Uh, going to the next slide, this is where we're going to talk about the relay pieces. So these are what you play after you play those first one of those first pieces. Mm -hmm. So these are the relay pieces. Uh, I'll do the first one. Lazulite Flash is uh, got a. It's a dream team. Both of these these relay pieces are also dream teams uh, pieces. Worth mentioning. So they've got that restriction going for them too. Um, you have to have used a relay piece in this game, which is you got to use the ones from the previous slide. The ones from the previous slide in order to play one of these, and you've got Lazulite Flash, which is a white piece uh, that you can choose up to two of the following from the following three. You can invite two collab livers. Uh, you can return two signies from the opponent, or you can return a signy from the opponent's field to their hand. There's no restrictions on that; it just has to be a signy that you can target. Uh, and then the last one is you look at the top three cards of your deck. You can add any number of them to your hand and put the rest in your enter zone, which means that this can be a draw two and enter charge one. It can be a draw three and enter charge zero. It can be an enter charge three if you want it to be. It's a very, very, very flexible piece in Last Light Flash. What's the other one? The other one is Lean Girls Academy Moon Knight. Uh, it's a zero cost uh, black... Um... Black piece with the dream team to have one or more black Lurig on your team, and you have to have used one of the relay pieces before you use this one. Yeah, I skipped that online too. You have to have a white L rig for to, to pull Last Light Flash off. You can't do it with weird color restrictions. Yep. Um, so this card reads it's a zero cost. If your center Lurig is level three or more, put the top 2,432 cards of your opponent's deck into their trash. Basically, yes. use this piece and mill out your opponent <laughs> immediately. It refreshes them at any point. Yes. Um, I, it, that one has a lot less text on it, but I also think it's also 
they're just as powerful, if not maybe more I powerful. Think so. I, I definitely think so. You know, uh, there's been a lot of like discard in the format recently. Yeah. Um, and this is just like one more way for you to push that extra damage during the game. Yeah. So you basically and uh, RIP damage. the life burst. Yeah. You, you, get, you get that re refresh damage no matter what, which mm -hmm. is pretty good. I, aggro decks want to do that. Control decks want to do that. Never range decks want to do that. There's also a, a hidden um, bonus bonus effect on it. I think I, I was watching a, a video yesterday talking about how some Yu-Gi-Oh cards have quote unquote bonus effects that aren't printed on the card, but due to the way the game works, okay, it gives it a bonus effect. All right. And so this kind of has a hidden bonus effect too. All right. When you refresh your opponent's trash. They don't have a trash anymore. And I know that sounds dumb, but when one of the best cards in the format is Super Holestia Saver to re to bring back a card, oh. bring back an Exia, bring mm. back a uh, way to mill you out with a uh, Phalaris, th this denies that. Now, a lot of the times... It you certainly can, cuts down on their options. Right, a lot of the times you can plan around this, right? You're, you're playing your game out, you're like, I have 12 cards, which means... Or I have 13 cards which means that I can pass my turn, my opponent can mill me 10 with Ultra Superheroes, I'll drop down to three cards, I'll draw two on my turn, leaving one card in my trash, or one card in my deck left, which means that I don't refresh, I can go ahead and, and use Super Lestia Saber on my next turn, I don't need it this turn, right? When you're running Selene Girls Academy, that's not, that doesn't work anymore. Selene Girls Academy can say, yeah, this is the time to screw over your, your Super Lestia Saber. Mm -hmm. You have no way to deal with this. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really matter. Sometimes people will, like, you know, run Machina Nebula or something to put some cards from their trash back into their deck. No, it doesn't matter. You're getting refreshed, right? And you've experienced this, too, playing Tom Clear. Sometimes you don't get... You get the, the 10 from Super, super Heroes, mm -hmm. and you get three from Clear. Yeah, from the, the timing like, on Clear is very tricky to land. So sometimes you clear them and it's like, they've discarded three cards and it's like kind of a lame effect. Yeah. But it's what it is. And the opponent figures out a way to navigate the game to be like, okay, cool, this is your last turn to deal damage to me. Um, I have two cards left in my deck, so I'm not getting milled out, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. That, this just is very simple, but very powerful. In that yeah. Fact. Yeah, sometimes the less text that's on a card, the more powerful it is. Yeah, honestly. Um, lastly, Flash still has, it's worth getting shot at, right? Uh, there are some of these new centers that want more collab libraries, and maybe you want to play the Lifers Podcast collab library tokens that you got Coming at the GP. at the GP, we sent them off to the printers. <laughs> sure, they should be coming in the mail anytime. Yeah, you guys um, should be excited. You guys get those just for saying hello to us. Yeah. <laughs> um, the... Getting at more collab libraries sometimes can be hit or miss, right? So with Ange, when we get to the, the new centuries in a second, getting some more bounce could be redundant. However, with Liz getting more collab libraries, which are basically free guards for her, mm -hmm. um, that stock goes up, mm -hmm. right? The energy charging could be like, well, I don't really need actually any more cards in hand. I don't really need any more enter. I'm playing white. I'm already pretty efficient with those things, you know? So you might not need those as much. But the powerful thing to, to really focus in here is, do you need more collab wipers? If you do, that's your answer, mm -hmm. you know? Some of these are going to run virtuals and not run one of the new Sandbaka centers. Um, and they're not going to need collab wipers. And then that makes a pretty simple answer. Celine Girls Academy is probably your best, your best choice. Can I just shout out yes. the art? Sure. Like, I understand that these are all, like, they're licensed by VTubers from the Niji Sanji. And, like, these designs are so freaking cute. I really love VTuber designs. Like, some of y'all out there are so creative with your, like, VTuber selves. I just love to see it so much. Yeah, I agree. Um... Moving right along, mm -hmm. we're going to get into the only, the only center I'm going to, we're going to go over. All right. So, oh. so we've got, <laughs> we've got Ange from this. There's, there's, there's four centers that are coming out, but like I said, uh, we have to talk about some of them and that means that other ones are not going to get necessarily talked about. Ange is really powerful. It's worth bringing that up. You can basically put Ange in any type of deck and it will do the job that you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. Liz 
Uh, you guys have the, the the deck tech videos have already come out. So if you want my opinions on on these things and how best to run them, you can see them. I think Toko is a close second. I actually think Toko is actually quite strong, but it just doesn't quite have the same abilities that Ange does. Mm. Timmy, what does Ange say? All right, let's take a look at the brand new level three Ange. So as you know, Ange is a white Lurig with a two white grow cost. Enter, invite two collab livers. <laughs> Action, pay one, uh, one colorless, one anything. Collaborate with the collab liver. Return target Signy on your opponent's field with power 12,000 or less to its owner's hand. Action once a game, hashtag Sage's time. This Lurig gains auto once a turn. When this Lurig attacks, it deals damage to your opponent unless they pay four or discard a card with guard until the end of turn. That is a big cost to yeah, guard. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's Hirana's ability. Like, they just basically cut out Hirana's ability, added an extra way to pay for it, and slapped it on a, a better overall L rig. Mm -hmm. um, being able to twice a game, and really that's usually enough to bounce mostly anything on the opponent's field. I know it's 12,000 or under. But basically, I mean, that is most things. Yeah. Like, there's only, like, specific Signy. Like, maybe, like, the five that I can count off at the top of my head that this wouldn't affect. Right. But for the most part, like, this will still bounce an Exia. Like, it, it'll activate the Exia, but it'll get rid of it. Yeah, but there's ways to dance around an Exia. You, for sure. If you are still confused on how to do the Exia dance... Uh, you gotta play more Wii Cross because there's just that's the that's the common dance, right? I see it. Is. Um, so <laughs> so it'll bounce most things. It'll bounce most things. It won't bounce or remember, you know, fifteen k and all. Well, that's but, what it's down. Yeah, there's there's ways to to make remember not fifteen k. <laughs> um, there's many ways to forget about remember. I, ironically, all of these ways happen to be white as well. So like you're you, you got options here, right? And that's kind of the funny thing too is is I said the blast of light flash like. Wouldn't it be cool to bounce four Signy with this? Sure, but I don't think you necessarily need it because White already has so many tools to bounce things. Yeah. That you end up you end up being like I, I mean you might just want the mill instead this just an extra damage. Be tuber flare, which there's nothing wrong with that, but we're just we're just calling it as we see it. Yeah, I'm gonna go to hot take. I think uh, I think I think Ange has the best design out of all of them, but what do I know? I don't know. Oh, I'm sure there's some. <laughs> there definitely be one of the comments below. There are definitely going to be some Liz and Toko stands. Don't forget Nito. Nito's joining them now. Them. Nito, I can already hear them. Nito's joining as well now. Um, look, it's good. Uh, you can put this. You can put this. Strong. You can put this center in an aggro deck. You're going to do well. You can put this in an deck in a control deck, and you'll have a clock. You can put it in a mid range deck, and it will also still do well. Uh, the fact that it damages, by the way, and doesn't crush a light cloth when it, with its uh, effect is also really cool because you can kill someone outright with it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of good things going for Ange. I don't think we need to waste too much time on her other than say she's pretty good. She's pretty good. She's pretty good. All right, moving on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me turn on the slides again. There we go. Uh, hey, let's talk about some assist lines. Assist. What's funny is some of these assists you may recognize as <laughs> not even being assists from this set. Oh my god. They're goodness. assists from set zero. Yeah. Uh, and Liz is on here. Um, I think Liz is a very, very solid assist line, just in general, right? Yeah, she is. She kind of she kind of just said, saw what, um, what, what do you call it? Uh, Akino. Akino's did and was like, cool. I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to do other things, which is just going to make me a more attractive assist line, too. Right, Akino does one thing particularly. Uh, Ange does basically the same thing, and then also can do other things if you mm -hmm. want to customize this line. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the only times that you've got this line in um, in white that allows you to A, draw cards, B, bounce at level one, and then your second option is A, um, stop damage, or B, open a lane, right? Mm -hmm. So to be clear here, Liz level one, uh, you get the option to basically uh, look at the top seven cards. You could put two black virtual in your hand or two white virtual in your hand. And you've got Liz uh, Sword, which just bounces a Signy. Classic level. Well, one. It, it bounces 10,000 or less. Right. Which 
does have a pretty wide range of applications that would go all the way up until your to your level twos. I guess it just depends on yeah. how quickly you want to grow her. It'll it'll miss some level twos and it will miss some level threes, or it will hit some level threes as well. Like so there's some some things going there for it. Yeah. Ice Wall's the new one. Ice Wall, you can pay three and you can stop two Sydney from attacking. You pay another three colorless, and then you get to look at the top five cards of your deck. You can put uh, the best two from them into your hand. Uh, those can be guards, by the way. And uh, and then, you know, so it's got some draw ability to it. It's expensive, but it's it it's on par expensive, you know what I mean? Like, like for its effect, it's expensive, but it's an average cost. Uh, then we've got our classic uh, Liz level two, otherwise I would, I would call it Liz bye-bye. Because uh, it's just Akino bye-bye. It bye really bye. is truly just Akino <laughs> for virtuals. <laughs> Pay two to enter. That's not the worst thing. Uh, bounce, like bounce target saving on the opponent's field, and then you can pay white and a colorless, and if you do, you can bring a guard back to your hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, these are solid. I don't know. They're solid. Yeah. These are good options for you. Uh, before, Liz always had... Liz was always kind of not as good as Akino, because Liz yeah. couldn't bounce yet. Mm. With this set, Liz now has a really solid level one option, and mm -hmm. suddenly two above average level two options. So you can use them. I mean, you know, when you compare them to Machina or something, right? You're like, oh, that this is lacking. But I think you can pretty much do that with any Elric, you know, assist. Yeah, I mean, the I think the appeal of Liz is that she's a good assist, mm -hmm. but she's a good assist for virtuals. Which is, so no, if you're playing yes. the Ninji Sanji Sanbaka, um, you know, like you would probably want Liz as one of your assists because of the reasons that we're talking about. Not to say that these abilities don't exist in other assist legs. Yeah, totally. Of course they do. It's just that why would you pick Liz if you're playing virtuals? That's right. Why. I mean, you're you're right. You're, you can say, well, shouldn't I pick MC Lion instead of this? And I go, sure. Could. Dig five is deep. Dig seven is deeper. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, again, if you're playing the virtuals, and if you're not, and, and you are still wanting a solid line that bounces and then does a bye-bye a, a impression or blocks damage impression, you can you can do that with this. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one to talk about is actually Ange herself, this time not a center. Um, but we've got some really good level one option and two really good level two options mm -hmm. that we have had before. What I really, really like that's new is the level one option that we just gained, which is Ange Love. Do you want to read that one? Oh, Ange Love. All right. So this is a level one uh, assist Lurig, which costs zero to grow. Main phase timing, enter ability. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Reveal up to one white Signy and one black Signy from among them and add them to your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your deck in a random order. Top seven, dang. Yeah, it's deep. Um, that's, so... that's like half of a um, Super Halestia Saber right there. Yeah, it's, basically. it's deep. Um, yeah, so... It's a deep dig and you get to pick two. Yep. So, so the... You've got this one level one Ange and a level two Ange that basically says level one Ange bounce a Signy, level two Ange bounce two Signies, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a very aggressive mode you can go with this. Sure. And then there's a very mid-range mode you can also go with this with Ange, which is love. You can go ahead and get your two best your two best cards. Um, and then Ange level two allows you to bounce a Signy for two enter. But you can also pay a black and bring a white Signy back from your trash to your hand. Mm. So it ends up being, in some cases, better than Machina in this scenario because it's easier to pay for those things, right? Get a black and get a, get a white Signy out of it. So there's a lot of decks uh, that are black and blue, but looking for a way to splash white, mm -hmm. but don't have a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Ange is a great way to add that. You know, to add to add this idea of splashing white into it for very little cost, especially very little colored cost, right? That's something you can't do with Machina, by the way. So if you have a black center and a blue assist and you want to splash white, how are you supposed to do it? Can't add the Machina to do it. So this is this is this is your way to do it, basically. Yeah. It has an it has a distinct niche in Wee Cross, I think. Because adding splashing white to your deck probably makes your deck better. Mm -hmm. I just I hate to say it, 
That is where we're at before. White has gotten a lot of love from We Cross, and it is not a bad color to consider in your deck. <laughs> Um, all right, so we've got another card here. Uh, notice from here on, you might see some Japanese uh, names here. They haven't released the full like list of these cards fully translated, so I'm doing my Band-Aid here to make sure that you guys get the cards early and know what we're talking about. Um, this is a level one a white assist or white Signy virtual that says, uh, during your opponent's turn, as long as there's another virtual Signy on your field, this Signy gets plus 2,000 power and gets shadow Signy... Shadow level one, excuse me, it's better than that. Shadow mm -hmm. level one, uh, which means that it can't be targeted by your opponent's level one Signy or, or the Riggs. Level, the Riggs. Mm -hmm. It's also a 3,000 power Signy, meaning that it is going to be 5,000 power. Mm -hmm. That dodges some link opening effects. It does. So it's pretty good. Yeah, it's sticky. It gives itself a little bit of defense. Mm -hmm. Nice little, I, I don't know if you would really qualify this as a utility Signy. Like, we love our level one utilities. It's a wall. It's a wall. Yeah, sure. I would call it more of like a wall than anything. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's nice and sticky, gets a little buff. Mm -hmm. Doesn't play nice with, with other Signy that aren't virtuals. You have to have a mm -hmm. virtual on the field to make this happen. There's ways around that, for example. So you can kill off your other level one, drop it on turn two, drop this into being a 3000 again, and kill it off with something mm -hmm. else. So it's not unbeatable, but it is annoying. It is annoying, especially if you put, like, this and another virtual or two of these out on, like, your first turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's annoying to deal with. Uh, yep. And then the next one, uh, again, we don't have the English name for that, but Tiff, do you want to read it? Sure. This is a black level 1 Signy with 3,000 power. Uh, its enter ability is put target virtual Signy from your trash to the bottom of your deck. If you do... This Signy gets plus 4,000 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. And as a life burst that says, target Signy on your opponent's field gets minus 8,000 power until the end of turn. Yeah. And so this turns into a cheeky little 7. Yeah. Uh, well, like, pretty much right away. And and the fun thing about it, too, it also takes a card from your trash, puts it in your 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 deck, makes it harder for your bone to mill you out. Mm -hmm. Negative 8,000, we know that's a great life burst effect to have. Yeah, that will cover most trouble, Signy. And, here's the fun one, it can't get you keyed. Like, it stays a 7,000, even if you keep Oh, because it. it's an enter effect. Because it's an enter effect. So once the enter effect activates and is resolved, then it stays until it says that, it resolves. That power modification is not something new from vanilla. Unlike the last Sydney we talked about, but that's because mm -hmm. that's a constant ability. So if you vanilla it, it goes away. Right. I mean, you can still you can still Yuki the first one. No, you can't. Well, you can't Yuki the first one because it has shadow level one. Right. But you can vanilla it. Is what you can vanilla it though, um, and its effects will disappear. But this one doesn't because it gets resolved on the enter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it gets that until the end of your opponent's next turn. Yep. So, again, a nice little defensive Signy. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the next one, we've got another uh, white level 1 with 3,000 power. Noticing a pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got quite a few things going on for it. Uh, its first ability is constant during your opponent's turn. As long as you have another virtual Signy on your field, all virtual Signy on your field get plus 2,000 power. Constant. As long as you have another Selene Girls Academy Signy on your field, this Signy gets uh, plus 2,000 power. Um, so this pairs pretty nicely with the first one that we showed off, or if you have two of these, now they're getting buffed for right. four, because they, they are Because they're both Selene Girl Academy Signy as well. So some of these virtuals are also virtuals Selene Girl Academy virtuals, mm -hmm. which is an, a subtype added to the virtual type. It's going to be a lot of those in the future. We yes. Get used to it, guys. Yeah. Buckle in. We're coming. We're this just starting this right. Level <laughs> for what is to come, I'm sure. Uh, this card also has a life burst, which says target Signy on your opponent field gains constant. The Signy cannot attack until end of turn. Draw a card. This is a nice little life burst. Yeah. Prevents prevents a potential damage and gives you some great advantage. Damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's solid Signy. Um, this it, is pretty good. It's pretty good. It buffs your other Signies. It can put 12,000s out of range for negative 12,000 effects, you mm -hmm. know. Um, 
it's not like it itself can't get killed. It can, but it's just annoying, yeah. right? This pairs nicely with the other one because it's like, all right, well, it's tough to kill off both of these. Yeah. So definitely a heavy, heavy defensive, uh, little level one. Uh, that would be very easy to pump up, especially if you have multiple of these on your field. Yeah. Now you got to start doing maths for blockers. And, and here's one of the things too. If you guys have noticed, we've just talked about nothing but this this virtual deck's ability to have new and good level ones. Level ones are the basis of your deck. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the, I can say with confidence there's at least five good level ones to choose from in your deck means that you're spoiled for options, right? Can't say that about angels. I can't I can't say that about like you know terror beasts. This is there's options out there, but are they good options? Are right. they the best? You know, options? you're like you're like and and I and you could write in the comments that I'm wrong below if you want, but here's the thing. You're gonna say, Oh, this 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 one option's really good. And you're I go, yes. The, the second option is pretty good. And you go, I'll go sure. They go, and this other option is average. And I'm like, see, it's it's you're going downhill. Going down. Your basis of your deck is not here, your basis of your deck is a slope. You know, whereas whereas the basis of this deck, the it's got a strong a curve foundation. On, the only thing we want to see a curve on is your enter curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the quality of the cards in your deck. And, and I suppose I should take this moment to, to say, like, virtuals are not necessarily the thing that's going to destroy the Wii Cross format just because they've gotten a power boost. I know there's some fear with that. We had that same fear with DXM. We had that same fear with Atoms. Mm -hmm. We had that all all of the same 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 trigger pieces. None of them have really managed to to destroy the format we cross. Yeah. There are ways to beat virtuals. <laughs> One of the ways is they're they're aggressive, and if you don't lose to aggressive decks, you might not lose to this one either. Mm -hmm. So this is not to say the sky is falling. It's just to say that this is a thing you should know exists. Yeah, we're just reporting on a little power boost and uh, giving hope to anybody out there that really just wants to play their favorite VTubers. You know who we you are! It. No, we get it. We get Your time has come. It is your time to shine. Right. And shine brightly you will. And I think this will be a, a fine power level for probably a year or two so you can keep playing this until it gets power boosted again. Yeah, sure. And in, in an eternal format like We Crosses, isn't that kind of what we want? Is just that there's like decks that get We're boosted up yeah. and aren't always like on the same plateau and making it kind of a fun playing field across. Yeah, and uh, on that note, like, don't you kind of want more like variety? Like, we definitely don't ever want this game to become like static. Right, right. right. That's for sure. So when it when we get an influx of like some power boosts or some new dynamics, new cards, like I was very concerned with Souls when they mm -hmm. first came mm -hmm. out. Um, like there's. There's so much variety in this game that there's anything that has like come across our table table nowadays. I'm like, okay, well, someone will figure out like how to counteract this or beat it and whatever. Or, and like that's part of the fun. Or it, its power level goes to here, and then the other decks are here for like a month, and then the next set comes out, and one of those decks is like, Ooh. yeah. And now you've got multiple, so it's and fine. Then we kinda it's fine. The, the game's balanced. I'm it's not worried. Fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Moving along. Moving right along. We got to another level one. You'll notice there's a lot of level ones here that I'm I'm translating uh, for us because again these are the last ones to usually get spoiled in the uh, on the Facebook page, the global Facebook mm -hmm. page. Here's the level one. It's black. Uh, it's got two thousand power. First time that we're breaking the trend of high power here. Yeah. Um, it's got an auto at the end of your turn if this signy is upped. Put the top two cards of your deck into the trash. If two virtual signies were put into the trash this way, you draw a card. Yeah, kind of Cosmo-y. Yeah. You know, you remember like the the um that was another type class was the Cosmos class where like if everything just related back to Cosmos, you were kind of like in the clear for whatever it is that you wanted to do. Yeah, this is very similar to that. Draws you a card. Yeah, I'm not. You know, that's it. Good, good card. Draws card you advantage. Card. Black uh, ones card advantage. We get it. The next card, however, is very good. I uh Pandora. Mm -hmm. Is very very good. You got the English version e here too. Elira Pandora. Yeah. Feel free to uh, to correct our pronunciations in the comments down below. We genuinely appreciate it. Yep. Um, so this is the level one Signy, uh, power 3000, white Signy. Enter, choose one of the following. One, if there's another virtual Signy on your field, target Signy on your opponent's field loses its abilities until end of turn. Or number two, look at the top two cards of your deck, put a card on the top of your deck, and put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So... This is a good 
virtual answer to Yuki's, I think. Yep. Um, especially because you are very likely to have another virtual on your field. Yes. And being able to vanilla out cards, especially later on in the game, when you are even more likely to have kept virtual signia on your field, then this is going to be super useful. Yeah, so so it's interesting that you bring up Yuki, because it is very similar to Yuki and very different to Yuki at the same time. I love this VTuber Yuki, design too. Yuki, for example, is a complete answer to Axia. One of the only ones that we've got. That's a complete answer to Axia. You can poke the Axia, cause the Axia to, to uh, have to trigger, and then do something else if you'd like. That's what you can do with Yuki, but you can also poke, do something, open up a field, right? You, uh, Exia will close down that field, and then you can put down the Yuki, move the Exia into that closed lane if you want to. That's the Exia right? dance. Yeah, that's the Exia dance. That is what Yuki's excel at. This mm -hmm. can only do half of that. It can vanilla out something and then trigger um, Exia, which is not the worst in the world. It's definitely half of a very important puzzle. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do the second half. So you have to know that it, it doesn't do the complete job that Yuki does. However, for other things, it does kind of do the complete job that the Yuki does, right? A pen light is in your way. You want that pen light's ability gone. You can Yuki. You can you can you can pen light it. See, I was mm -hmm. kind of confused. The other thing that it does very well is actually a card we've had and we've tested lots before called a proto energy. Mm, yeah, that's proto right. proto energy lets you look at the top two. You can look at one of them, put one on top, one on bottom. Now, that ability we deemed not good enough to play as, as a proto Hikot, basically, mm -hmm. in white. We did test it a lot. We tested it a lot in, for example, um, Karjaki. Um, but it itself just wasn't good enough. It was just, it was always like, this is, this is a solid ability, but never never gets to the top mm -hmm. but if you add the vanillaing effect to it i think i think it puts it up here i think you're like suddenly a very playable card yeah the great equalizer yeah yeah yeah. uh move to the next one we've got i believe this one's toho or to toto i think toto is is its name toto um uh, it is a very strong reason to be in virtuals which is it's a level two white signy uh 5000 power with the ability of enter pay white. If there's another virtual on your field, that's a running trait that you have to have another virtual on your field to do a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. You can target a level one signal on your opponent's field and return it to their hand. Um, Wait, do you always have to have another virtual on your field because they have to collab with each they other? They gotta collab. That's so cute! Why is Woodcross so cute? Um, but it's also, it is, it is a good balancing thing because they can't just slap this down and bounce something. Like, if they've got two... Yeah, that would be they've out of got, control. Right, if they've got two Totos in hand, they've got a one of them is not gonna not gonna work. They've got to yeah. they've got to put the first one down and then do the second. And then one do the second. You know, yeah. uh, it also means that virtuals, unlike every other thing, right? So there's a lot of tribal stuff that you can put that tribal package in. Virtual package is not exactly an option. You are a virtual deck, or you're not a virtual deck. You yeah. can you can change those numbers a little bit, but the the, the more you dilute that. The less the less consistent it's going to be. Yeah. I I do think that this is one of those rare uh. Uh, type classes that is not a package, it is a deck. You play this, you're committing to a full deck of this, right. because that is the best way to make it work. Right. But this is like uh, flashcards, but like flashcards on crack. Oh my god. Do you want me to say steroids instead? Flashcards on steroids. No, I don't want you to say any drugs. <laughs> <laughs> a flashcard gone nuts. <laughs> a fl flashcard that is not allowed to play in the Olympics anymore. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's really good. It bounces any level one. Doesn't matter what its power level is. Yep. <laughs> uh, moving right oh, along. Oh, actually, you know what that's like? It's a Signy that is a um, over pursuit. Yeah. That's what that is. Exactly. It over pursuits a good cart. <laughs> it doesn't have to be controversial. All right, moving on to the next one. This is a level two black Signy with power 5,000. Uh, enter, pay one colorless. Target Signy on your opponent's field gives minus 3,000 power until the end of turn. If there are 10 or more virtual Signy in your trash, it gets minus 5,000 power until the end of turn. I, I genuinely don't think we need to spend any time on this. This is just Toto slightly worse. Ooh. This, is, this, is, this kills a level one. You mean uh, Togo? 
No, Toto, the one that we oh, just the talked one about. Okay. This is Toto, but, but worse. Slightly worse. Uh, that's all. Both of those, by the way, Toto and and this are Celine Girl Academies. So you're you were oh no no no, this one's not a Celine Girl Academy. Also slightly worse. So the last one was a Celine Girl Academy virtual. This mm-hmm. one's not a Celine Girl Academy. Look, both of them are level twos that get rid of a level one on your opponent's field. They're mm-hmm. both very good. Mm-hmm. That's all I mean. Hey, is Lancelot a good card? The answer is yes. Lancelot's yep. a good card. This is just the spiritual successor of Lancelot in virtuals, white and black, respectively. Yep. Uh, if black didn't have this one, black would be significantly behind white in the virtual uh, contest. But it does. So the next one is basically what I, I always call this one remember at home. Oh my God. <laughs> we have remember at home. <laughs> it's just banana. This is banana. R- R- Rugu. Just get banana and you'll be banana. good. Banana. She's so sweet. The looking. banana banana. She doesn't look like a banana. She's in a banana peel. See the the what the yellow what? the yellow all around her. The card all around her is the banana peel. The banana banana peel. No. <laughs> You stop that. Anyway, so this is uh, Remember at Home. Um, so this is your level 3 white signet with power 12,000 with a constant ability. As long as there's another virtual signet on your field, your opponent cannot guard unless they pay an additional uh, 1 colorless. It also has a life burst ability. Choose 1, return target up signet on your opponent's field to its owner's hand, or draw a card. Literally, literally off-brand Remember is still a good card. Yeah, honestly, anything that will tax your opponent for guarding, especially if it's pretty much guaranteed to work because you will yeah. always have another virtual signy on your field, not bad. Not to mention, um, it, at the very least, the life burst will give you card advantage, even if there's no target up signy. It is not guaranteed because this depends on after life bursts have started to 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 play their effect. There's been many of my testing games oh, that's true. where Fanana is just lonely on the field. Oh. And and uh, that does not happen. Oh, no. It is it is a major weakness of this this uh, this deck. Uh, there's also you know ver- there's also assists that can kill off if they can't kill off this can kill off the things next to it. So again, this is where I go saying there are more checks than you think to this deck. Okay, actually, that's a good point. Thanks for pointing that. Out. Yeah, the next one is even more. So oh no, it's not. It's the it's going to be a little bit before we get to that one. But the, okay. number fifteen is Selene Ta- Tatsuki. Selen, I want to say it's Selen. Sure. It's uh, a level... It's probably Selene Tatsuki. It's a level three that is a virtual. It has an enter ability of pay black. Uh, if you do, uh, the target signal on the opponent's field gets negative 8,000. If there's 10 or more virtuals in your trash, it's negative 10,000 instead. Yeah, and since this is a level 3, by the point that you're playing this, you'll probably likely have that in your trash. There's a fair amount of mill in in uh, these... Especially in black signals. virtuals. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to get a hold of. Yeah. Again, these effects exist elsewhere in cross and are slightly stronger, but having them stapled on virtual cards to make the other virtuals good means that your, your baseline is set. You've mm-hmm. got a strong, solid bottom end of your deck. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one is Furlan. Oh, that we know from Fudin Slash. Yep, the spell. All right, so this is level three white signy. Fudin! Uh, 10,000 power, constant. Use costs of your Fudin Slash are reduced by three, which would turn it to a two cost spell, I think. Is, it, is Fudin Slash five or seven? Five, it's five. Okay. So it turns it into white white. Yeah, so it turns it into a two white cost. Uh, auto, once a turn, while there are three virtual signy on your field, when a signy on your opponent's field is returned to its owner's hand by your effect, draw a card or enter charge one. While there are three virtual signy on your field. Okay. And auto ability, at the beginning of your attack phase, you may discard a signy with guard. If you do, return target signy on your opponent's field with power 10,000 or less to its owner's hand. Yeah. yeah, get pretty strong. Uh, it is worth mentioning that this thing feels like it's custom made to hang out with Ange, for whatever reason. Ange costs one to bounce, kind of to bounce a Signy. 
this energizes you when you bounce Sagni with Ange, so you get paid back for the, the, the cost. Nice little handshake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Furon Slash is a fantastic spell if you can get it to cost two. Bounces anything on the opponent's field. Yeah, that's true. I do remember a lot of people really liking that spell, and I was looking at it like, at the time, yeah. our pieces were costing us like four or five, yeah. and I was like, there's no way I'm going to use a, a spell that, that costs that much. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... And I think Furin um, also helps a little with Ange specifically, too, because Ange can only bounce those 12Ks, right? Or less. So if you run into one of those remembers, you'd be like, well, that's why I've got the Furin Slash. Here's yeah. the cheap Furin Slash, bounce it, and then I've still got my abilities. Yep, well. yep. Although these Signies have so much going on in between them, like, I feel like putting a spell in there is... You know, it's it's a choice to put it in your deck, but then again, I'm also the type of person that when I was playing a a odd deck that had nothing but signies in it, I was a very happy camper. So I'm I'm probably an outlier opinion. <laughs> uh, the next one is Chigasa. Um, Chigasa. Chigasa is actually the one I was I was talking about that She's also so cute. also is high risk high reward. Um, so it's a level three with ten thousand power. That is a Saline Girls Academy, again, just so mm -hmm. you all know. Uh, yeah. And has, when an Elrig on your field attacks, it could be any color, by the way, any color of Elrig. That matters, because the only thing that we've had before has, specifies white Elrigs. Mm -hmm. um, if there are three virtual Signy on your field, you may pay white, white. If you do, you can up that Signy that attacks and it loses all of its abilities still in the turn. Uh, basically, it's your Tama at home. <laughs> um, but it also gets stapled on another ability if that wasn't enough it's enter ability is white look at the top three cards of your deck reveal a virtual signy from among them and add it to your hand put the other two in the bottom of your deck in any order so it digs a little and it um uh it vanilla stuff out <laughs> uh well vanilla is the the l rig but it lets you get your uh your second attack mm -hmm. right and that's that's the that's the big thing you always got the text on the the second when you up your your thing to not make it so that way it double combos with some kind of piece or something yeah um its weakness is that all you need to do is play an assist that kills something on their side of the field and then it has no text anymore because it needs the three virtuals on the field also if you don't have a full virtual package it will fail right like that's yeah. also a thing that exists for it if you yep. put down emergency here's my guard and you put that down it doesn't work you know yeah, or like a multicolor that's not a virtual right like, if you're trying to splash some kind of effect in it it won't work yeah so it has its downsides too but its upside is very good that's why i said it's got high high risk high reward mm -hmm. um you're also attacking right your opponent let's say you open up those lanes you attack with the opponent and you attack your with your signy if one of those hits a life burst and, open, and kills one of those signies yeah this effect doesn't work anymore it's got awkward timing mm-hmm but attacking twice with your Elrig is pretty good. As we have seen. <laughs> it's just a pretty good ability. As we have seen. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good ability. It's, it's, it's worth that risk, I think, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, hey, this is the last one, Tiffany. Okay, so, sure. We've got um, a black level 3 Signy with 10,000 power. This is the Taka Takamiya? Rian? Ryan? Taka, Rian! Takamiya. Um, it says, enter uh, one black, as in one single black. Put target level one virtual signy from your trash onto the field. Not bad. Um, and then auto, at the beginning of your attack phase, target signy in your opponent's field gets minus 3,000 power for each virtual signy on your field until end of turn. That's 9k. I mean, no, if, you, if, you, if you line it up, right? It's 9k. 9k right because at the beginning of your attack phase oh you're saying for... minus nine yeah okay Sorry. yeah 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 the 9k is a lot it is it kills a lot of things yeah but it doesn't kill takamiya that's true it doesn't kill her <laughs> it doesn't kill herself <laughs> um i always I, I mean okay you can correct me if i'm wrong but i just feel like paying a enter to put a level one virtual from your trash onto the field is a bit odd like, paying to put a Signy on your field, I think, is weird. But then when you think about it, that could be a level one black, as in the black that you just paid from your Enter Zone, yeah. 
to put onto the field so then you can replay a Signy. Right. So any of those black level one Signies that we just talked about. That have enter effects. That have example, enter effects, for it. example. Like yep. you can reuse it. Um and you're you're basically just doing it for, for yeah, free. I, I don't think <laughs> Well, I mean the... you're you're paying an enter to, to do it. Yeah. In an ideal world you're like, I would rather have my enter and also just have cards in hands but we don't live in an ideal world you know people play mean mean old blue decks sometimes and say <laughs> no no you don't get cards in your hand and this is your way that you can go like all right well i can at least pay an enter to fill out my fields mm -hmm. but it, it that effect combos with the card next to it sure so the card next to it is a black level one signy with 2000 power and it says enter uh black Target a Signy on your opponent's field, and it gets minus 2,000 power until end of turn. If there's a Signy named uh, Takamiya, the one that we just talked about, on your field, that Signy... Sorry. That Signy gets minus 5,000 power until the end of turn instead. So you could pretty much just not have... Like, you can just clear a lane with that alone if you're going to have this cute little combo between these two guys. Yeah, totally. Um, and I think there's math to be done, as always. Virtuals, for some no. reason, really love math. What it's is either plusing or minusing? What is what is no, negative nine? Mm -hmm. And then if you add negative five to it, what is that number? That's fourteen. Nine plus five is fourteen, so it's negative fourteen. Yeah, that's, that'll clear that anything. Kills, like, everything. <laughs> I think that number is very purposeful, right? I think the only thing it doesn't kill we, would be like a down to remember. We cross is like twelve k should be difficult but doable. Um, 13k should be borderline impossible, but you need to figure out a way to, to, to handle it, but it's not completely impossible. And 15k should be right, right out. out. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do 15k. Yeah, like that's just a wall and you will deal with it later. Yeah, so so I think that's where, where this kicks in, right? It's yeah. like, it plays that kind of game too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cute little combo that you can stick into your to your mainly black virtuals deck for sure. Yeah. I... Lots of math going on here. Um, it does seem relatively powerful. There's a lot of card interactions that would be very fun to play, depending on how you build your deck. Um, but it is it's not undefeatable. Yeah. I think I think it's uh like for example, um <clears throat> basically every time I'm looking at a tribe and they put tribe support out, I go what does the tribe do? Is it do the things that I want? Right? Which is, there's basically two things I want. Really, and we can boil it down. I know those two things can be extrapolated to multiple things. But the two things are basically, um, does the tribe open lanes? Or does it give me resources? Hmm. And I guess the third, does it give me some form of defense? Like, I, I guess I, I will take that as a, as, a, as a third option as well. Mm -hmm. If you can give me any of those three things in a tribe, specifically at least two out of them, I'm like, I'm all for it, right? <laughs> and Virtuals gives it cards, opens lanes. Not very defensive. Mm -hmm. I will say straight up, not very defensive, right? Like, none of these have great protection abilities on themselves. In fact, that is one of their weaknesses. But... They're very aggressive, and they 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 open up lanes, and they 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 get you cards in hand. Um, whereas, like, I, I don't know, I'm I'm about to offend the one person who loves, uh, I guess, aqua aqua fish or whatever they're called, aqua beasts or something like that. You know, I, aquatic <laughs> so, beasts. Sorry, sorry, aquatic beast lovers out there, giving me an enter sometimes and drawing me a card sometimes is just not enough yeah right? i need it to be consistent and like yeah like there's I, enough rng in card games that like when you build a deck you want it to be really consistent to do the thing you want it to do when you want it to happen right and like for example like demons love to mill me and like mill myself and mm -hmm. i'm like that's okay do i get those to cards do i get those cards <laughs> back in my hand and for the most part they're like no it's just it's just, we're just here to mill and it's like that is not what I, that does nothing <laughs> that does that does nothing in this that's game. So true. That's so, so true. <laughs> so, so I mean, if it was Why like, are we doing it? It was like mill you and here you go, or mill you and then damage them. Like I I I could be in for it, but a lot of the time, I see that's one of the things that why Adams just doing things to do things. Right. That's why one of the one of the reasons why Adams is one of the few tribes that actually is worth talking about is because it kills things, mm -hmm. draws you cards. That's the two things it does. Mm -hmm. it sometimes makes your opponent discard cards, which I like. I said resource war, so cool. It does a resource war thing. Yeah. Um, virtuals do resource stuff and 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 opening lanes. So there are checkbox. Checkbox. 
All right. That is our review for the best cards for the upcoming uh, revisit to Niji Sanji. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know if we missed any cards, in your opinion, in, in the uh, comment section down below. You know we love reading all of your comments because sometimes you guys are smarter than us, That's especially true. when it comes to correcting how we pronounce things, which we do appreciate. Yeah. Um, and please make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any future updates. And uh, as always, we always flip a light burst. Bye, guys. Goodbye. We have Remember at home. We have Remember at home.